The practice of prescribed burning can be traced back to the Native Americans and was adopted by early American settlers. However, as more places became populated, burning brush died out because of the fear of burning one's home. In this report, the Monitor's Ryan Nakan shows us a team that is protecting Georgia's forest land by reintroducing the practice of prescribed burning. In the forest of Little Okmulgee State Park, a team of fire starters is getting warmed up. First mapping out the area. Alpha will be the northwest corner. And then clearing a path to make sure their blaze doesn't spread to other parts of the forest. All the while preparing themselves for that initial light. Today they're control burning 40 acres of Little Oak Mogi to save a habitat that would otherwise collapse. Basically we're just burning to preserve this habitat and, and keep it um, in shape as a sand hill. It's kind of uh, preventative maintenance, if you will. By doing control burning, you're able to uh, kind of take a proactive approach and go ahead and do your burning before something like a, a lightning strike occurs and a wildfire breaks out. Control burnings are necessary to maintain a thriving ecosystem. They improve the forest by reducing fuels, putting nutrients back into the soil, and developing wildlife habitat. Taking away with the old to make room for the new. In the sand hills of this park, the gopher tortoise and indigo snake depend on control burnings to survive. During the burns, the smaller animals dive into these burrows made by the gopher tortoise, while larger animals are able to escape the fire just by moving to other parts of the forest. And the elimination of the brush by the fire allows new growth as food for the species. It helps the uh, regenerate the wire grass, which the gopher tortoise depend on for survival. So there's really a, a lot of, of uh, benefit to, to, to doing control burns. The survival of many creatures that call this forest home depend on the survival of the gopher tortoise. It's called a keystone species because its burrows play a critical role in maintaining the ecological community. Many species use the holes dug by the gopher tortoise as their homes. Without these burrows, the ecosystem would collapse. It's really neat just, just to see how habitat changes over time and, and to go to sites where maybe I haven't burned, but I, I know it was burned. Control burnings don't only save the habitat for animals. The longleaf pine depends on forest fires to regenerate. That's the pine that fire built. More than uh, being fire adapted, it's fire dependent. The longleaf has trouble growing through the brush when fire is not present. In the past, longleaf stretched over 90 million acres across the U.S. But now there is only 3.5 million acres due to overharvesting. Since the beginning of this year, the fire team has burned 19,000 acres across the state. And they don't receive any Georgia state money. They get their funding from federal grants, fundraisers, and the wildlife tag. And though inhaling smoke is not a perk of the job, the fire team says they do it because they have a burning desire to make a difference, not only on state and federal land, but private land as well. The people we work with are great. It's, it's awesome this past year working more and more with landowners. It's been really cool to see how excited they are and, and see um, all these other people committed to conservation on their own land. So yeah, it's a great gig, a great job for sure. Setting fire to our forest land so the dreams of conservation don't go up in smoke. For the Georgia Farm Monitor, I'm Ryan Knockhand.